Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my bushcrafting toolkit. Now, I'm going to be changing up my videos here a little bit, I think, and more than diving into the bushcrafting loadouts that I carry, I want to explain the base tool set that I carry and utilize and how it will get updated over the course of time. And this is going to be the first video looking into specifically the toolkit. Now, the reason why I want to do this is because, as I've mentioned in previous videos, bushcrafting takes on so many different roles depending on the types and capacities of what you want to train on. If you want to build shelters, you know, you're going to make, you're going to set up your loadout to build shelters. If you're going to, you know, train and practice for firecraft, you're going to set up your loadout for fire building and for fire making. And so the, it, the loadout for me has become more of an individualistic type of setup, depending on what I actually want to do with any one given trip, as opposed to just having a base loadout. However, the toolkit never really changes. And these are my base tools that I use for general purpose activities. Once again, whether I'm firecrafting, whether I'm just bushcrafting and, you know, building things or whether I'm creating large crafts, small crafts, things such as spoons, forks, you know, small utensils, or building shelters or larger crafts. These are the base five tools that my kit consists of. So with that out of the way, let's jump into this. Okay, so we're going to go from smallest to largest. So the first in the tool kit is going to be a Great Eastern, Great Eastern Cutlery Farm and Field Pocket Carver. Now, this is something that I've mentioned in previous videos that I'm trying to shift more into a traditional style of how the toolkits that uh, woodsmen of days of the days past used to have. And so part of that means instead of carrying a bulky, uh, smaller fixed blade for carving, I'm actually transitioning over to a small folder that's very traditional. It just has this little leather pocket slip and you just put this in your pocket and you're good to go. So this Great Eastern Cutlery Pocket Carver, as the name kind of implies, is primarily a carving knife. It has one longer blade mixed with two shorter blades. They all have a similar blade style. They're all a semi-worn cliff. And it's just a really lightweight, easy way of carrying three blades that are very small, very purpose-driven for carving and working on finer craft. So that is the first tool in the toolkit. So transitioning right to the next tool in the toolkit is of course the Legome Bush Knife. Now this, as I just mentioned, is my general purpose do-all kind of bushcrafting knife. If I need to skin a birch tree to take some birch bark, whether that's for fire crafting or whether that's for crafting itself, this knife can do it. If I need to start fires, this knife can do it. If I do need to process animals, this can do it. If I need to do just about any general purpose camp tasks, that's what this blade is reserved for. So that is the Legome bush knife, and of course I have it paired with a Light My Fire uh, Army, fi Army Fire Steel or Ferro Rod. So that is the general purpose tool, and hopefully you guys appreciate the uh, coordinating orange color for these two tools. I thought it would just be fun to have a couple orange knives. Okay, so now moving over to the axe and hatchet. So first with the hatchet, this is a Holtzbruch all mic, and this is my general purpose go-to hatchet. We're doing smaller work. Oftentimes, as you guys can see in a lot of the videos, I'll use either the Baco Laplander or this saw, which I'll get to in a minute, uh, for in tandem with this hatchet when I just want to uh, limb a tree really fast and process some firewood or get some logs for a fire to sustain overnight. I'll use this to quickly clear out limbs off of, I'll use this to quickly clear off limbs off of a dead uh, tree and then follow it up with one of the saws. So that's the primary purpose of this tool. So next to that, and admittedly it doesn't see as much use as I would like it to, but it, that is the GBA Scandinavian Forest Axe. Now this one does often come with me, but like I said, it doesn't always see as much use as I would necessarily like it to, but it is for heavier duty work. So if I'm going to be processing larger trees, uh, if I need to buck a larger tree, or if I need to fell, especially 
uh, felling trees, that's where this comes into play. This also comes into play with larger craft. So if I'm going after building something like an elevated kitchen or a shelter like a wickyup, uh, once again, that requires dropping a lot of trees and that helps. Uh, this helps with that process immensely without being too much of a burden. It's a pretty easy ax to pack up and carry. And once again, it does the job very well. Okay, so last but certainly not least is going to be the Spring Creek, if I remember correctly, that's its name, 30 inch uh, buck saw. Now this is it in its packed up state, but this is, like I said, a 30 inch buck saw. It's pretty straightforward and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a 30 inch pack slash buck saw. And once again, if I'm going to be processing firewood for a night, or if I'm going to be building uh, any types of shelters or larger crafts, this comes into play and is tremendously helpful because a 30 inch blade is truly going to go through a lot of wood very quickly with a, with a less fatigue than something shorter because it ultimately requires less strokes to get through a piece of wood with a 30 inch than with something like a 24 inch. And formerly I was carrying a 24 inch buck saw but I didn't like the weight or the size of it, and I always felt that the 24 inch was just a little bit too short for a lot of what I wanted to do. And it's one of those things that a 24 inch is, it sounds pretty big, but once you start getting into eight to 10 inch uh, wide pieces of wood, especially like I said, for building larger crafts, that 24 inch blade starts to get outgunned pretty fast. So it's been my preference here of late to go over to a 30 inch pack saw, which admittedly is a little bit harder, which admittedly is a little bit harder to pack in than a 24 inch, but not that much. And especially with its size being reasonably compact like it is. Okay guys, so that is the basics to my bushcrafting toolkit. This is what I've tried to, over the course of years, pare down and really just hone into the few tools that I need. And honestly, with these five tools, I feel like I can do just about anything uh, when it comes to bushcrafting. Now, the only thing I might add, once again, if I'm specifically going to be building lots of spoons or utensils, is I would probably add a carving or, sorry, I'd probably add a hook or a crook knife to this kit. But aside from that, I can do basically anything I need to do in the wilderness, whether it's from building large shelters or structures down to carving simple little forks with these five tools. And that is what my experience has led me to. And ultimately, any type of loadout that I build off of this, so this is the ultimate bones to any loadout I will build. So, so that's why I wanted to take time to break down the actual kit itself and explain to you guys what the purpose of each of these tools is and how I field them and why I field them ultimately. So anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and as always, God bless and I'm out.